Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new Lucy on Cars, but today it's Lucy in office. Today is a bit of a different video because obviously the Range Rover is no longer in my hands. And just quickly, I wanna mention the person that won it is a viewer of the channel and my dream literally came true. I was so hoping, because obviously it was over to anyone. Anyone could have won this car. I was so hoping it'd be someone who watches these videos and it was. So it's a guy called Tom, so huge shout out to you. Uh, please keep in touch and give me updates on the car because I'd love to know how she's doing. I miss her very much and I'm sure she's in very good hands with you. And I'm just so pleased that it was someone that watched the channel that won it because if it was some randomer, they don't know the story, they don't get it. If you know, you know. Anyway, today's video is a bit different because I mean, I've got two other cars downstairs, but I've got a big four by four hole in my heart right now that needs to be filled. I've got the BMW downstairs and there's also another car in the garage, which I've promised a video on very soon. A few of you guessed it right in the comments, but that's coming soon. I need to find a new car. So I'm gonna be on Auto Trader and we're gonna get it up on the screen just here. I'm gonna share my phone screen with you and we're gonna see if we can find one. See if we can see what's out there, see what the market's looking like. I haven't looked in a little while because of sort of selling it and stuff. I was waiting for it to all go through and get that sorted. But now that's done, we've got a clean slate, we've got some money in the bank and we're ready to buy another car. So I'm sharing my screen now. Let me move to the side a little bit. Um, and also, if you're new around here, I have to mention this at the start of every video, please do subscribe because I can see in like the back end of this channel that uh, a lot of the people that watch these videos don't hit the subscribe button, but it's totally free. So if you can do that, it means a lot to me, it really helps out the channel. So let's have a little look, pop in our details. I mean, be being realistic here, I do want another Range Rover. That is like number one top choice at the moment. I'm not completely against other brands right now, obviously, but I really would like another Range Rover. Um, so let's have a little look, put it in. I mean, I, I'd be open to, part of me like thinks Discovery could be quite good, I don't know, but I feel like I know Range Rovers the most and I would like another variant of what I've already got. So let's have a little look oh, what I had. Uh, I might actually not put any specific in here and just see what comes up to begin with and then we can sort of get into the finer details in a second so let's have a little look uh what years shall we go minimum year and we can see the popularity as well it's all 2000 that's bizarre they're all, they're, they're all there's 2000 of each one that's really strange there's no like particular year that's got more i might start looking at something a bit older just to see so 2002 to 2000 and Seven. Let's see the sort of prices we're looking at there. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. There's only 86 cars available in the country and I've put it as like nationwide. So let's have a little look. Uh, okay, cool. Straight away, we've got 4.4 V8. So I could try out a bigger engine and it's only three grand. Is that a good price? It looks like it's in very good condition. Wow, look at that interior. I mean, I would like to go for something different in the interior this time. I feel like I always have black interior. I mean, these have got black seats, but having the sort of lighter and the wood dash, there's something quite gentlemanly about it with the blue paintwork. I don't like these wheels very much at all. And it's got the beast written on, what? Are you seeing this? Why does it say the beast on the back? Um, right, why does it say the beast on the back? I'm not quite following there. Um, fair enough, bit, bit random. Um, let's have a look. So it's obviously the petrol engine. Um, so maybe going from an old, a newer 3.6 litre diesel to an older 4.4 litre petrol, maybe that's different enough. I want something that doesn't feel like the same to drive. I mean, I love the other one, but I don't want just to buy the same thing again. I wanna mix it up and try something different, especially for the channel as well, so I can sort of compare it for you guys. Um, and in terms of mileage, I mean, I'm not scared by mileage anymore, having owned the other one, but having owned my previous Range Rover that had 170,000 miles, Having 125,000, that seems like nothing, especially considering it's 2004. So it's not too bad at all, but I just really, I'm not sure about these wheels and I'm not sure about the beast on the back. But yeah, cool, okay, interesting. That could be a good option. Now this one here very much reminds me of my other one. I think it's similar color, but obviously these are gonna be pre-facelift. So it's a very different look. And I think you can really, really tell the difference. I do probably prefer the facelifted version that I had, but I am wanting to try something different, so maybe I do go for something else. 
Um, well, this seems quite expensive, but because it's got 67,000 miles, so it's a TD6 for six grand, 2005, 67,000 miles. So that's got really low mileage, but I'm not that excited by the idea of getting a smaller engine than the last one. Um, and it feels like, I don't know about you guys, it's six grand quite a lot for that, considering with the mileage on these, even if you've got a high mileage one, you'd have thought it'd be maintained better, and therefore getting one that's lower mileage might not actually be a good thing because it might have not had the right maintenance in that time. Well, this one's a bit jazzy, isn't it? Whoa. It's got like a double grill going on. Um, lovely wonky photo as well, love that. Let's take it from music video, ooh. Now, I think this looks a bit like one of the ones that I did in that reaction video of the Range Rovers that have been modified. There's two seats in the back, that is handy. Um, big chunky side steps, they're like gloss glossy side steps and it has got that tan interior that I'm after. Is that an autobiography? I can't see it. Whoa, we've got like mint humbug seats going on and a mint humbug steering wheel. Okay, this is quite a statement. I mean, I don't know if this is my taste at all guys. I think this is a bit garish for me. Um, Five plus owners, love that. Could be 25 owners and they're like, yeah, five plus. <laughs> and the description is super quick, love that. Super quick car. And that's up for five grand. Okay, I'm getting an idea of how much things cost again. I'm sort of back in the game. I'm back in sort of understanding. I've been out of it for over a year because the last time I properly, properly looked was when we were looking for our old Range Rover. Okay, what have we got next? Okay, this one's been a little bit blacked out. So you've got a 4.4 litre and it's petrol again. There's a lot more petrols and diesels I'm seeing actually. Uh, 2002, nearly four grand, 24 month warranty included, that's good. That's quite reassuring. Get rid of it before 24 months and then we're, we're winning. Uh, don't know what's included in the warranty though, but that's interesting, that's good to know. Um, and actually I do wonder with the next one, is it worth getting some sort of warranty? I know we have the AA parts and garage cover on the other one and we tried to cancel that actually, but because we paid for it all up front, they wouldn't give us the difference in time, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, we were wondering whether or not it would be worth doing warranty because I know so many people pay for the warranty, nothing goes wrong versus people that wish they'd pay for the warranty and everything goes wrong. So it's just, I mean, it's a classic thing with insurance products, isn't it? You're sort of either for or against them and, and it just depends on the kind of person you are. But that could be an option on the next one. Now, I don't think I particularly like the combo of sort of uh, black on black here. And look at those curved wheels, blimey, they need a nice refurb. That's the only thing with black wheels. If you can't uh, keep your wheels off the curb, then um, probably not for you. Yeah, I'm not that excited by it, I have to say. I don't know, I don't know what it is about it. I think, you know, I think I'd actually love a green one. I think I'd love a 4.4 litre petrol in green with a tan interior. I think that's my dream. Should we put in green to see if there's any options? Let's have a look. Six options, let's see. And I have heard recently that the green ones are more expensive because they've become a bit rare. So this is the green I'm after. There you go. There's only one in the green that I like. This one here. I think I like it. Just don't like those wheels at all. Ulu number plate. It is cool in green, I think. It feels so much more like countryside slash queen E and it's got the tan interior, nice. Condition looks quite nice, actually. And you've got sort of the tan on the dashboard as well and some of the dark wooden trims. Okay, let's have a little look at this one. So 4750 for a 2006, but then it is a three litre. Do we want a three litre? 106,000 miles, we've got less mileage. Maybe over 100,000, you think a bit of work's been put into it. Great road presence, but spelt like a cheese grater. Great road presence. Cotswold cream leather interior. I didn't know that was a name. I love that name, Cotswold cream. Okay, now I think I'm gonna mix it up totally and we're gonna get rid of the green. Where's our green gone? And we're gonna try something newer. Let's see what's going on with the newer stuff. Let's go for 2008. Do that one first. Let's go up to 2012 and from 2008. Done. And let's maybe put a model variant in this time. 
Oh, there's 36 autobiographies. Let's have a little look at them. How much are these going for? Wow. Six grand. That's cheaper than my other one, and it's an autobiography. 3.6 litre TDV8. It's the same again, but the autobiography version for six one six thousand pounds and only 109,000 miles. Is that not a really good deal? I quite like this colour as well. Black interior again, fine. I know I like it. Is that quite good? 3.6 litre diesel, yeah, exactly the same. 109,000 miles, so 60,000 miles less, 1,000 pounds less than when I bought it. I thought these had gone up recently. Maybe they've dropped again because of the whole insurance thing. People are finding them hard to insure because of how much it is. Only three owners. That seems like quite a good deal to me. Got any extras? Yeah, electric sunroof. Hmm. Okay, that is very, very, very interesting. And whereabouts is this one based? Where are we? Brilliant, no location on the map. Okay, that's good to know. So autobiography, something a little bit different. See, I don't know if I like them in white very much with the whole black and white thing. I think they're a bit flashy for me. I prefer the darker colors. Um, let's see what the cheapest autobiography would be. Yeah, it's the one I saw before. Another one there that's similar price, similar mileage same engine they're all sort of 3.6 td v8s so there's ah there's a five liter v8 here that would be fun that'd be a lot of fun nearly ten thousand for 2009 177 thousand miles literally the same as where i left off don't mind those wheels uh light interior i think i'm going to take off the autobiography and maybe have a little look at the engine size, minimum engine size, let's say minimum four litre and look at some bigger ones. Oh dear. Oh, <laughs> it's been blacked out, the registration. I thought it was some funny panel on the front there. Um, Cat S, hmm, maybe not. Look at this one, little bronze number. Now I, I did say I wanted something that's countryside-y, it probably doesn't get much more countryside than this colour. I don't know, and the seats do match it very well. Nice shiny cream seats. And not as many photos as I'd like of that one, actually. You wanna see a little bit more detail, but so this is 8,000 pounds exactly. Auto Trader says it's a good price. 4.4 litre TDV8, 2011, 148,000 miles, which is apparently 37,000 miles above average. That's good to know. Big old description on it. Nationwide delivery available, that's good. I don't know if that color's a bit out there for me but it would be really fun to try out the 4.4 litre. See, I'm seeing a lot come up that say lower price on, and I'm really thinking that's because of the insurance. No, I'm, I'm, I'm putting green in again, guys. I wanna see the greens, show me your greens. Where's the color gone? One, 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 one green. Right, this is, this is gonna be my car then, there it is. There's my new car. Is that dropped at the front? Has it been lowered? Or is it just a funny angle? That is a lovely color. Okay, interesting, interesting. Tax number plate, classic. The tax is so expensive that it's in the number plate. And they've got some TV, yep, TV screens in the back, classic. That looks a lot like George's leg, actually. It hasn't got my tan interior, but it is a lovely looking car, 4.4 litre, six owners, quite a lot. Uh, 136,000 miles, interesting. Okay, this has actually been so helpful because it's giving me an idea of what's out there and the kind of thing we're looking for, the kind of thing that we can get for um, for our money. And in terms of budget, I haven't really mentioned budget at all, but budget wise, we're sort of thinking somewhere, I mean, obviously it can be less than this amount, but I guess somewhere under the 10 grand bracket would be ideal. And part of us did want to try something cheaper because we know that there's going to be running costs with it. So we thought maybe we'll try something like around five grand, something a bit older, but it just depends on what comes up. Now I've just looked at Defenders because I think that'd be very cool as well. They are so expensive. They're very cool. They're great looking cars. I think they're brilliant, but they're very expensive. And I feel like they've gone up recently. Wow. They're so good looking though. I'd love a Defender one day, I think. But then you don't really get the sort of luxury feel inside it. It's definitely more agricultural. I feel like a Defender's not my next car, but I feel like it is a car I will own in the future. I'm not that interested in a sport to be honest, but that has really helped. I feel like I've got more of an idea of the costs now and there's some 
prices out there that are actually better than I thought. So that's good to know. That's always good to know. And as always, guys, let me know in the comments if I said anything when you were like, no, Lucy, that is not a good deal. Or yeah, that's an amazing deal. Let me know because I feel like a lot of you know exactly what you're talking about, which as always is very, very helpful for people like me. <laughs> I'm definitely still learning, but it's definitely been like a huge learning experience owning the Range Rover because it's unlocked so much more. I'm going to end this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's okay that I wasn't sat in a car. We were talking a lot about cars. It's given me more information on how much things cost at the moment, what's out there, what's more popular, what's less popular, um, and obviously that like thing to give you a price guide on what's a good price or a low price is very handy. I still feel like we got quite a good price with our other one when we paid seven grand for it. It feels like that was the right price at that time. But I guess if the insurance is skyrocketing, people are trying to get rid of them, maybe that's why things are going down. So it's probably quite a good time to buy. But yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you very soon in the next Lucy on Cars. I'll actually quickly put my email on the screen because here is where you can send me any links or anything you see, or you can follow me on Instagram, send me a DM over there. I'll put that on the screen as well. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Goodbye.